Hello there, Southern Fried Gaming Expo. My name is Bobby Blackwell from the Voice of Geeks Network, a podcast network dedicated to all things geek culture, as well as a streaming channel over at twitch.tv slash vognetwork. I've been hosting a video game podcast for almost 15 years now, and uh, I've been uh, affiliated in, in going to the Southern Fried Gaming Expo since its ex- inception. The Voice of Geeks Network has been a sponsor for just about all of them, uh, and, and I've always enjoyed going and playing real pinball because I don't get a chance to play real pinball because I don't have any real pinball at home and that made me kind of sad Uh, so I figured I would take some time uh, because I am not as cool as many of you who uh, are able to usually go to Southern Fright Gaming Expo and many people that I get to spend my weekend with uh Unlike all of you who have your own pinball tables, all I have are the video games, and I come from the video game world, so I figured I would take some time and play some of these old video games, uh, pinball games that I played from from my youth, uh, and see if see if the experience will live up to what I usually go to with Southern Fried Gaming Expo. So. I'm going to start at the very beginning, or pretty much the very beginning, because I've got my Atari 2600 sitting right here, and uh, I have this really old ratty box of video pinball. It, it's it. I promise it says pinball underneath. There it is. Uh, video pinball, uh, and uh, it, this even actually has. This is not what I grew up with. I didn't grow up with an Atari. We'll, we'll get to what I grew up in a second. Uh, but I figured I'd start here. It even has the instructions. For the video pinball and uh i gotta show you this picture that's on here on page on, on the introduction page one let me that's exactly what we all look like i should probably turn off the uh the green screen real quick here uh turn off the green screen uh so you can actually see this wonderful picture of this dude uh playing atari pinball uh so that that's obviously what you're supposed to look like playing this game unfortunately i'm not going to be doing that so the way the game is played apparently is uh you because Obviously, your Atari joystick looks like this. Just a little one joystick, one button. Uh, you, uh, you so the left pushing left is left on the left flipper. Right is right on the right flipper. Up is both flippers. Uh, and actually, if you press the button uh, and you hold the button down and you you hit left or right, that nudges. There are uh, two different games here. Um, there is a one play, and each game has a one player and two player variant. So technically, there are four games on this cartridge. Uh, one uh, the, the one does not have uh, bumper values being accumulated. The other one has bumper values accumulated. And uh, there are difficulty settings. If you have difficulty A, there are additional places for your ball to drain, whereas on difficulty B, you do not. So. Uh, I will show you that this is the cartridge that's in here in this really ratty box. Uh, and I'm going to move this off to the side here. But there is the video pinball cartridge. And uh, I'm going to turn back on the green screen here. And then it is time to uh, put it in my Atari 2600 that I brought up to my streaming setup and figured out somehow how to actually get it to work. So, without further ado, we're gonna see if this thing fires up and see how it goes. So let's check this out, ladies and gentlemen. Will it turn on? It does. Check that out. So, uh, like most Atari 2600 games, it does have a black and white mode. We're not gonna be playing a black and white mode. We're gonna be playing in this dark, uh, d- dark color mode here. Uh, and if I do set the difficulty right now, it is on difficulty A, and then you will actually see if I hit difficulty B, which I just did. There are actually some along the bottom, about halfway through, there's some extra places to drain. I will actually hit the extra places to drain. We're going to play on game one. I'm going to hit the game start here. And now here we are. We're about ready to play. So you going to hold down uh, to, to re- bring the plunger back, and then... Here we go. Maybe I will actually get to play sometime. Maybe. Perhaps. 
That was the time I could have used the flippers, but it didn't matter. The game kind of plays itself. Come on. There we go. I have no clue what the flashing thing means. It's probably in that instruction manual that I just skimmed through, because who reads the instructions? Oh my gosh. This is just like being at Southern Fried Gaming Expo. Oh, that 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 was nice. That that was very realistic physics right there. Check out these 1982 physics of you know jump going in the drain and out the drain. That was me nudging the ball, by the way. Here, I'll nudge it again. I nudged the right, left, boom. There is a tilt mechanism. I don't know if I want to hit it yet. Hey, we're hitting some numbers here. Five. Six, seven, eight, maybe. Yeah, you stay out of there. Here, I'll nudge you over here. Well, that was amazing. Yeah, go in there. Go in, 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 go in. I said go in. Why aren't you going in? Why aren't you going in? Are you going to just do that forever and ever and ever and ever and ever? Really? Really? Not even giving me any points for that? It's just going to go back and forth like that? Really, Nolan Bushnell? This is what you're going to do? Oh, okay. He's decided to, to, to have pity on me. Thank you, Mr. Bushnell. Oh. Don't thank... No, there's no thanking you, Mr. Bushnell. Last ball. That was amazing right there. Yeah, this feels like I'm at Southern Fried Gaming Expo. So that's how I am at pinball. Uh, and that is the uh, that is the first game. Like I said, there are... That's the two-player variant. And then here's the other uh, version of the game where the spinners do not accumulate. But it's the same play field. It is exactly the same. Yeah, that's 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 uh what what it was like. So that was Atari 2600 pinball. No, not really scratching the itch. Not really scratching the itch. So maybe I should try to find something else. All right. So so that was the Atari 2600. I didn't grow up with the Atari 2600. I got that later in life. What I did grow up with was the Intellivision. Uh, and I actually do have a working in television right here. And in uh, 1982, according to the cartridge, they had pinball. Now, the thing that was interesting about the Intellivision, uh, and this is another thing I'm going to have to uh, remove my green screen uh, for, is that they had little overlay cards. And this was actually how you customized your controllers. So this was the one for pinball. And uh, you would have a controller. The, there were two controllers on the Intellivision that looked like this. They were uh, a number pad, a dial, and four buttons. There were two on each side of the controller. And you would take your overlay and you would slide it in. There we go. So it needs to fit in underneath here. And so I had a little bit of problem with that. But now it's snugly in. And so now we can see that uh, the bottom two buttons is your left and the right flippers. And then the top two buttons will do the all. And then the uh, dial at the bottom is for uh, shooting. So... You can also, it looks like, actually hit these top two buttons, the one and the three keys, to actually play the game. So I am now going to 
attempt to put the cartridge into the machine. And we're going to see if this fires up. It's going to be great. All right. Here we go. Moment of truth. Does it turn on? It does. Check that out. All right. So I am now going to... This is 1981. The cartridge said 1982. The cartridge lied to me. I'm going to select one player, and I'm going to hit the Enter key. And here we are. Now we are in Intellivision Pinball. Already, this feels a lot better than uh, than the Atari Pinball. It's a little more real. That's what George Plimpton wants you to know, by the way. Once you compare, you'll know. This is why we had the Intellivision over the Atari, because Intellivision games look like what they were what they were doing. I was doing better in Atari Pinball, but they look like the games that that what you you knew what they were. Whereas the Atari version. I guess there's five balls in this one. The Atari version, you just kind of had... It was a little more abstract. And that's the way we're, they were with baseball and football and... Really? Really? You're going to do this to me? You wouldn't let me put the, the, the overlay in. And yet you're going to do this. Because there's multiple screens in this game. That's the thing that I know, is that there's different colored screens and... Are you really not going to let me show the multiple color screens? You're not. Game over. Let's try that again. Really? Really? Hey, I got a spinner. Go me. Obviously, the physics are not the best in this. Neither is the timing. I'm blaming everything but me right now. This ain't going well. Of course I did that. Of course I did that again. This really feels like Southern Fried Gaming Expo now. Again. That's this this is so Southern Fried Gaming Expo for me. This is just This is why I get to play every pinball game there because I'm only there f on each machine for like a minute. People behind me love it because this is they know if they stand behind me, they'll get to play really soon. Oh, that was a good save. Thank you, computer. Ooh. Maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought that was a, a little black hole that would take me to another area. It'd make me feel so cool. Stop. Okay, go. That's not what I wanted you to do. Dang it. I think there's the thing at the top, and I think if you get in that, which I could not do, um, I think that uh, you would be able to uh, go to another area, because I do know that there are other screens, and I can show them if I, since I am incapable of getting there on my own. Yeah. It didn't even wait. I 
must have hit the flipper button. It's like, no, you want to go back to the title screen. You're that bad. So apparently, if like I know, I know that if you uh, sit at the screen for long enough, it will show the other screens. There were this was a multi-screen pinball game. It was actually kind of cool. Uh, I remember as a kid uh, enjoying this, and obviously being a lot better at it than I am now. See, this is one of the other screens that if I was good enough, you could have seen yourself. You could see me play on this screen. But no, I wasn't. Or how about this screen? You could actually spell pinball on it. This would have been a cool screen to show you if I could have played it to it. But no, we got it. We out of the demo mode do it for you. See, I knew that's how you got up to the next area. And then you drain back to the screen that I was on the whole time. So that's in television pinball. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, kind of hard, unwieldy to control. I wish that was me playing, but that's the computer playing, getting a much higher score than I ever did. So we're going to shut that off. And we are going to go to uh, try see if there's a different game, a, more, a, a game a little bit later on in the 80s that might pique our interest. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I've, I've left the consoles for a little bit and went to the computer that I grew up with uh, because this one actually let me do more than just play games. I was able to make them, and I'm talking about the Commodore 64. Now, I don't actually have a real Commodore 64 here. I actually have the Commodore 64 Mini, uh, which came out in 2018, uh, and there is actually now a full-size Commodore 64 with a working keyboard. This one, obviously, the keyboard doesn't work, but they've got a new full one, full-size one. It came out this year in Europe because of... You know, it hasn't come out in America yet, uh, but I plan on getting it as well. Uh, but uh, it has a whole bunch of games built into it, and it comes with a Commodore 64-style controller that's USB. Uh, but what you can do is you can load D64 disk images to a USB drive and play them that way. So why don't we take a look at this? I'm actually going to go back to the main menu. So let's go ahead and exit out of basic. You can actually write basic programs if you want. I'm going to go into my USB stick, which was a uh, E3, it looks like 2010 uh, press kit. So I've, it's actually still has all these like NFL 11 for the Wii and stuff. But no, we're going to go to pinball construction set by Electronic Arts. You can make your own pinball game. Uh, so what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to put some flip flippers down. So I'm going to make a game that I can, I can be good at. So we're going to make, put some, put my flippers. We'll put that one there and we'll put this one here and, uh, we need a plunger. So we're going to have this guy right here go right there. We need a ball. So the ball is right here. Uh, and, uh, we have a game now. So, uh, let's see here. If I do this and I hit the little button here and, oh, there we go. There's the ball. Awesome. Look at that. I've got a game. Uh, but we need to go back and we, we I need to add some more stuff. I need to make it Bobby Blackwell friendly. Uh, make it, make it worthy of me being able to play something, uh, here. So let's see. Well, we'll, we'll I, I think these go usually down here. Sure. That works. Um, put this guy here. And then uh, why don't we why don't we do some other stuff? We're going to put some spinners. I'll put one a little bumper here. Put a bumper here. Why not put a bumper here? Make it a big old happy face. Let's see how does this one play? How are we doing? How are we doing? <laughs> Let's try that again. How's uh, the bumper? Let's see here. Up. Oh. All right, let's reset that once more. There we go. We got some. I know what I can. I know what I can do. All right, we we. I got a plan. I got a plan. So I'm gonna take this guy. And I'm gonna put him here. And then I'm gonna take this guy. And I'm gonna put it here. We have a little room for the ball to actually get up. 
All right. Now, have I made a pinball game I can actually be good at? Come on. Oh, yeah. Is there anything I can put down there to stop it? Is there a bouncer thing? I don't know. What's this guy do? Can I put it down here and have it bounce back up? We'll see. I have no clue what that thing does. Let's try this. Yeah! Finally. A pinball game I can play. Thank you, Commodore 64, for giving me a pinball game that I can actually play. Oh. Okay, moving on. Okay, now we're going to go up to the uh, NES days. Nintendo actually released a pinball game. Uh, I uh, So I am not going to be using original hardware for some of this stuff. Uh, but Nintendo actually released a pinball game called Pinball. And so we should probably check it out. See what this is like. It's got nice music there. One player game A, one player game B. Let's do game A. All right, how does this play? This is me. One. Okay, so the D-pad is your left pl bump, uh, flipper, and uh, the A button is your right flipper, and the B is... There we go. Okay. Multiple screens... All good. This was probably, I think this was one of the early launch titles. For, really. This was one of the early launch titles for the NES. It was one of the first games they put out. Around the same time as Mario Brothers. Not Super Mario Brothers. But rather Mario Brothers. Even though I think Super Mario Brothers launched in... America before er, launched in America at the same time as the NES in like those like three cities that it was in like New York LA and Chicago maybe were the only places you could get an NES in 1985 I don't remember I was not making purchasing decisions at that time I know some people watching this video are probably like I was you youngin I'm actually staying on this screen just by, you know, randomly hitting flippers. That's not a penguin. I wanted three penguins for whatever reason. I don't know why I wanted three penguins, but I wanted it. Last ball. Okay, fine. Don't give me the other penguin. Can I have a full house or a flush? A royal flush, maybe? No? You're just going to get locked in the... Okay. Aha! Saved myself with my amazing use of physics. And then I immediately needed the uh, ball saved. Oh, really? Is that game over? That's game over. Let's try something else. Okay, so let's talk about a recreation of a uh, of an actual pinball table made in Nintendo form, and I actually do own this cartridge, and it does work. Uh, like I said, I'm not using original hardware for this segment. Pinbot! Good old Pinbot. Dare Pinball... T Dare Pinbot to the Pinball Challenge is what it says. So let's see. How does it compare to the actual Pinbot? It's actually done by Rare, which later on did games like Donkey Kong Country and Banjo-Kazooie and then Sea of Thieves most recently. And there's here here she is. There there's I guess there there's Pinbot right there for you. 
All right, one player, let's do this. Bop to the music. All right, so, yep. Same controls as the NES pinball game. Obviously, looks a little more higher end graphics than the uh, original 1985 pinball game we just played. Really? That's that's so me. That's so me. Pinbot, you're going to do that to me? I feel like I'm at the Southern Fried Gaming Expo with as many times as I'm draining balls really quickly. Taken out of context? You don't want to say that. You don't want to... That, that'll get you banned from Twitch and YouTube. You don't want to say that phrase. Something happened. Can I mess this up? Oh, okay. I locked a ball. Sweet. So the thing I like about this is that you can always see the flippers at the bottom as the screen goes up and down so they can show the whole play field. It was, it was a good way to do it back in the, you know, in the, in the 80s when you had limited resolution. Oh. Oh. Multi-ball! Oh, come on. Thank you. Yeah! Finally something good's happening. Oh. I think I need to get it in the, in the left, the left eye, the left hole there. Oh, no, oh, okay. Hey, everything changed. All the colors changed on me. I don't know what's going on. special so as you can tell I'm one of those pinball players that uh, just tries to keep the ball from draining and I'm not actually like aiming at anything or following any kind of strategies I understand that pinball is not random I understand that there's actual ways to guide a ball to a target and you have a definitely have a strategy of what how you want to go shoot this ramp first then this ramp then this ramp I'm not that person it's just under my control This is one of those tables that I would own. I would own in my own house. Just like probably everybody else. I think it's a popular table. <laughs> I got to Uranus. 
Don't say that on YouTube and Twitch. Oh. I believe that's the end of the game. Game over. Game over. I can write my name. P-O-G for the Voice of Geeks Network, vognetwork.com. That's where uh, you can find me and my podcast, The Bobby Blackwell Show. It's also on iTunes, Spotify, all those other places. Let's try another game. All right, so the next game I want to show is one that I really like the idea of on paper. However, in actuality, it's not that great. And I thought it would be. It is called Pinball Quest for the NES. It is the world's first pinball fantasy, and thankfully not the last, because other games have done it so much better than this, like Rollers of the Realm uh, and, and Wiz Orb, which is actually more like Breakout. But Rollers of the Realm is pinball as a... Uh, as, as an RPG, but this was, I guess, the first one that did it. It sounded great on paper. Let's try it out and see how it plays today. Pinball Quest by Jalico. So it actually did have other pinball tables. It had this Pop Pop Viva Golf and Circus, but we're going to do RPG mode. We're going to play a role-playing game. Uh-oh. They're coming to take the team. Oh, they, they stole the king. So now I'm off to save the... So, sa save the king. So, the thing, first thing to notice is that the flippers, they can go up and down. That's because there are multiple screens. And if you fail on a screen above, you fall back down, and you need to make sure that you bring the flippers back. So, so the goal here is to get your ball up to the castle. And that, that ghost that I just did, he's got the key. He's been waiting for me. Look like I could re really, I'm really on the ball. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha, He needs my help to save the princess. Okay. Prince has been kidnapped and being held. I thought it was the king, but kidnapped and being held captive further north in the castle. Destroy the monsters. They get in the way and increase your attack strength. I'm sorry, I cannot give you more help. Well, you're useless. I used to be a soldier in the king's armies, but then I took an arrow to the knee. Now he's a spirit walking through the earth. Bethesda jokes go through the span of time. Okay, so I think I need to get the key, which might be from that last gravestone up there. There we go. Maybe I just shoot the door. No, okay. I did not complete my quest. Do I want to try again? Yes, I do. Luckily, it doesn't really reset your progress. You just start from all the way down here. There we go. No. I feel like I'm at Southern Fried Gaming Expo with these, these, this terrible pinball play. Luckily, this one has as many continues as you need. There we go. Now I have to hit the up, and now I'm up here, and I have to move my flippers up here to handle these. But, oh, okay. If I drain in between the flippers, I go all the way back down to the first screen and have to come all the way back up. That's why this doesn't work well on paper, because, or this doesn't work well in practice because there is no checkpoint system. Oh, now it's the boss. Okay, so now they've turned into the boss, and I guess I gotta hit the boss multiple times. Really? Okay, at least that thing has a magnet on it.
No, 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 no. Okay, so now I've got to go back down here. And I've got to shoot my way back up here. Preferably. There we go. I'm back up here. There's the boss. I don't know how many times I got to hit him. It's obviously more than three. Oh. Sweet. All right. So something's happening. All right. So the gate is open. All right. And it takes me all... Okay. So that took me right to the gate. All right. So now I'm in here. And so I'm actually controlling this guy. And this is a shop, I think. I can purchase something. I have five fifty-five sixty. I can purchase some stoppers. A permanent stopper for thirty thousand. Well, let's see. Purchase. What flippers can I get? I can't afford the flippers. I only have fifty-five. So let's let's uh, purchase a floor stopper. Why not? You can obviously steal as well. But we're now going to go to the next room. So now I gotta go back down here and I've gotta fight my way back up. Okay, I think I'm gonna get back up here. Alright, now I'm back up here with the witch. Why is there a witch? I don't know. Up. Oh. Oh. Can I not get back up? Oh. So, like I said, now I'm down here. And I've got to fight my way back. Oh. So, yeah. So, I actually have no control. I'm all the way back at the beginning. And now I have to go all the way back up. So, just that one, like, I made it to the castle and you drop out of the castle and you leave all the way out and it drops you all the way back to the beginning and you have to work your way back up so with that being said let's play something different okay so now i'm gonna uh show a game that i played a whole lot and it was actually for the game boy back before we had lights on our screens we had four colors and we liked it that way and the game that I am talking about is Revenge of the Gator. You wouldn't think that it was a pinball game unless you actually looked at the uh, the instruction manual. Then you could see, oh, yeah, it's a pinball game. Uh, but it was a, a pinball game. It had, like, the theme music sticks in my head even to this day. Uh, and uh, let's check it out. Let, let's, let's see. Uh, let's play it a little bit here and see how I remember it. There's the music. Little gators dancing. Yeah. That that just stuck in my head for a long time. All right. So let's see here. We're going to push push the start key. We'll do one player gator. So same controls as uh, the other Nintendo games. The D-pad is the left flipper, the A button is the right flipper, and I get eaten by a gator. It's not good. Let's try that again. Ball two. So another one of those multi-screens, and there's bonus screens and bonus mini-games. We'll see if I can get to one of them. Oh, 
obviously not that way. Really? Really? I used to be better at this game. I don't know. Maybe it's because, you know, Southern Fried Gaming Expo. Let's try this again. In Pinball Quest, that would have gotten me up to the castle. Oh, now it'll let me... Okay, no, but now, now I'm not going to be able to actually get the ball up there. And that's it. I'm going to play it again, though. Oh, I got a bonus stage. Okay. How bad can I mess that? I can mess that up really well. But this is the screen that's above that, that when you open the door, it you go up to this screen. So if you get all three big gators, you get stoppers. If you get all three no gators, they take them away. Which means if you didn't have them in the first place, you didn't lose anything. All the way down to the beginning. It's like Pinball Quest. I'm going all the way down to the beginning. All right. Back in the bonus stage one. I killed the gator and immediately gone. And then now I'm all the way back down to this. Yep. And, and now I'm all the way back down to there. Like, well, that was dumb. At least I made it to the high score. Vogue for the Vogue Network, Voice of Geeks Network. It's where my podcast is. Let's check. Let's let's check. Let's check a few more. Okay, so next I'm going to actually talk about a game that came out and I never played because I did not have a TurboGrafx-16 growing up, but I do have a TurboGrafx Mini, uh, TurboGrafx-16 Mini right here. And there is a pinball game that's, you know, one of those more virtual pinball games, uh, ones that you can only have in a video game, kind of like some of the other ones that we've had, but this one is really one that's not based on a real table. And it's called Aliens Crush. So I'm going to... Pull it up. We're going to turn on the menu music here. The TurboGrafx-16. We're going to play some Alien Crush. It's really suspenseful. Got to hit the run button. It wasn't start. It was run. We'll do fast. Uh, Lunar Eclipse. Sure. <laughs> All right. Same controls as before. You got your D-pad is your left flipper. The one button, which is what they call it on this one, 
is your right flipper. It's got multiple screens. Much like the last ones. Well, that sucked. We should try better next time. Did I... Oh, okay, now I'm up here. Okay. Well, that sucks. thought the game was over or something. It was like... Okay. Really? So one of the things this thing does is uh, that other video game, like that other pinball games don't do is that they have some of the elements of the pinball table turn into like real monsters and they go away. Like the bumpers on the side here, like now he's, he's gone, so. You don't have that guy. And then he, then he, then a new one spawns. That's a lot of bonus points. That's a lot of bonus points. Ooh. special stage I'm gonna I'm not gonna stay on it for long if I know me and I know me and after this video you all know me too and my playing skills okay all right I got some bonus points I can tell that the flippers on this one are a little more forgiving. Because that should have gone all the way down the center, and I was able to hit both flippers like you're not supposed to. And save the ball from having Ooh, a boss battle or something? Of course. I'm supposed to hit the thing in the purple? I didn't do that. I lost my bonus point. Sorry. I mean, it at least apologized. It apologized for my bad play. Thank you, game. Different bonus game. I'm just letting the game play itself at this point. It's like that Atari 2600 game. It was going back and forth, back and forth. Really? Oh, yeah, and then I don't pay attention. And, and lose. I did get bonus points, though. And I just go, go down a bit. Oh, I did not get the match at the end. My game is now over. Vogue for the Voice of Geeks Network. That's Alien Crush. All right, so there's one more game that I want to show. I'm not obviously not covering every pinball game that came out during this time, but there is one more from the Genesis that I figure we should at least look at just a little bit. 
So the last one I am going to play is uh, thanks to the fact that I have a Sega Genesis Mini. Uh, the, the, so uh, it, it, it has a whole, a whole bunch of Genesis games, but Sonic the Hedgehog was one of the many franchise characters across all the gaming systems to have a pinball-like game. There was a Pokemon pinball game. There was a Metroid Prime pinball game on the on the DS. That was great. Uh, not going to be playing that one. But uh, Sonic Spinball was a game that uh, came out in 1993, and it was uh, like the Sonic the Hedgehog pinball levels, but it was its own game. So why don't we check out some Sonic the Hedgehog Spinball. Sega. All right. Good luck. So in this one, you also can control Sonic with the uh, with with the left and right on the D-pad. But you got to remember that. So A, the left button, is your left flipper. B is your right flipper, and C is both flippers. So it does take a little bit of getting used to after uh, playing games where the the D-pad was the left flipper and the either button was the right flipper. Oh, I thought that was going to be a loop that took me somewhere I hadn't been before. But no, it just puts me where I've been multiple times. Up, oh, draining slime. There's the Chaos Emerald. How do I get it? 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 That's not how you get it. There we go. Hey, new area. Game over. That's all she wrote of Sonic Spinball. I think I made a high score, but I don't put my new initials. So thank you so much for joining me on this little uh, little look at some of these old... Uh, pinball games uh, from video games from the 80s and the 90s. It does not replace the real thing. I wish I was playing real pinball tables. But next year, we will all be able to do that. Uh, there were a lot of games from the era that I wanted to talk about and, and I never got to. I did not talk about the Pinball Dream series on the Amiga, uh, which was great. Epic Pinball on the MS-DOS was a game that I played a whole lot. That's some great music. Uh, and uh, there, there was even like the, the Game Boy Advance, the Pokemon spin, uh, Pokemon Pinball was a fun one as well. But I did not want to go through too many of them on this uh, little video here. So I kind of hope you enjoyed it. I know it's not a panel format like you would find at a convention. It was just something I decided to do just to see if I could. So my name is Bobby Blackwolf. I am uh, the host of the Bobby Blackwolf Show. It's a very 
innovative title name, I understand, but it's a video game podcast I've been doing for almost 15 years. I started in July of 2005 on that podcast. So uh, we are at the Voice of Geeks Network, which is at vognetwork.com. It's an audio podcast available on iTunes, Spotify, TuneIn, uh, Google Play, where, wherever you listen to music uh, podcasts. Uh, but we also record live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash vognetwork, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, every Sunday night, followed by Orange Lounge Radio at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. So if you want just video game talk, uh, come join us there. Uh, and I hope to see some of you there and uh, participating with us there if you can. So uh, enjoy the rest of your weekend. And uh, if you actually do have an, an actual pinball table at your house, I envy you. And uh, go go play some pinball better than I did, in my honor. Take care, guys. <laughs>